Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to, we're gonna look at the differences between uh, STRs and APPs. STR stands for Standard Terminal Approach Route and APPs simply stand for Approaches. In which circumstances do you use them? Well, the official answer is if the ATC instructs you to do so. If the ATC doesn't instruct you to do so, then you shouldn't use them. Now, from flight planning perspective, you still might want to use them because it will make, I would say, flying a little bit easier and will also, I would say, make it easy to approach the airport. So, let me start explaining why those STRs will help you. Well, those STRs are predefined routes which you can use to come from a certain point to the airport or close to the airport because eventually you always need to switch to an approach. Think of this scenario, right? So currently our flight is configured and we're flying from Rotterdam to the Hague Airport, then via Mobile, and then eventually it will guide us to Charles de Gaulle Airport. In this case, I selected STAR, Standard Terminal Approach Route in Navigraph Charts. Now I already know the answer is that some of you will say, hey, but Navigraph chart is not free. That's correct. So say keep an eye on the internet because in some cases you will find those maps also on the internet and you can reuse them. However, I've got a paid subscription for it and I can definitely recommend to use it because it will help you with a lot of things. <laughs> so I would say it adds so much things which you're definitely missing if you don't have it. If you go to the STRs, you can find those STRs, right? And those STRs can also be made visible by using the show overview option. And here's what you already see, what I just explained in a few minutes ago. In this situation, we've got so many STRs, right? We've got the one starting from MAT, the one starting from MOP, the one starting from DINA, and the one starting, the one starting from VDU. And you can see that I would say none of them and at the airport itself, they will bring you close to the airport. If we would for the, look for the other approaches, for example, the ones coming from the uh, uh, southwest side, they will do exactly the same, as well as those for the uh, southeast and northwest. They will simply bring you closer to the airport. It's definitely not guiding you to, in this case, runway 09 left, which we selected here. What you do however see is that they will end up a certain point where if you would look at the approaches, you will see that there's a connection point with the approach. Because in most cases, if you're being instructed to fly a certain STR, it will at the end go over in an approach. What you will see in the flight simulator, uh, you will see that you're mostly being assigned an approach. And that's what you can see if you select approach, right? You can see that the filter is gone now. That's good, but if I would press show overview, you can still see the approaches and that you can select runway. In this case, I selected runway 09 left, which it could be one of the runways which we've been assigned to. In this case, you still see a lot of, say, starting points. And if you would, I would say, overlay the SDRs, you will see that there is a connection point because in this case, when we're coming from Mobile, right, which is over here, you can see that it will fly more south and then makes a turn to the west and then it will connect that SDR directly to the approach. So can they be used separately? Uh, well, yes, approaches can. SDRs are likely to be used in combination with an approach, right? Because it does make sense to, let's say, fly a certain route close to the airport and then don't have an approach. Uh, in this, uh, say, circumstances, right, we can, let's say, select the approach which we want to use. And then we can select, can or can see what that approach is, right? So it tells us a little bit more about, hey, what's the ILS DME? What's the direction which we need to fly into? and some more information about what's the uh, altitude which we need to fly and I would say in which uh, where we can find a localizer, in this case uh, the Glidescope 9050. And then some more information like the uh, 
category of ILS, right? Category one, two, three, and four. I will go into a future video a little bit in more detail about those and also what you need to do in case of missed approaches. But that's too much detail for now because we simply want to focus on this one. So if I select the one which we mentioned, right? Mopi to uh, runway 09 left ILS, I can still show it, right? So I can show it. And then you will see that there's an overlay, right? You can see that this one ends here. All the, I would say, STRs from Mopo end here. And then it will go via this nice approach route into the airport. Keep in mind that in a lot of circumstances, the HC from Flight Simulator is not nice for you because it will keep you flying on a very high altitude. And then it will probably tell you somewhere here that you need to make, I would say, Pretty crazy descent, which you will result in that you will miss the, uh, let's say, landing. Uh, and then you need to do the missed approach and then starts overall. So keep that in mind that sometimes you need to ignore the ATC for the altitude perspective or use, for example, VATSIM, which has, I would say, far more accurate ATC uh, compared to the built-in ATC from Flight Simulator. Now, the next question which might popping to your mind is okay all nice but this is all with navigraph can't i do it with for example simbrief uh, the answer is yes and no because simbrief is a little bit more limited compared to what you can do with this nice tool right so let me jump to simbrief and then let me show you how that works so this is simbrief for those who don't know it great tool it's free it allows you to program your flight so that's what i did right i put in Rotterdam the Hague airport as departure airport and arrival uh, pre-show to go. And then I added the uh, open aircraft editor and I added a profile which I found on the internet for the Phoenix A320. And then this is the uh, registration, the HC uh, call sign, uh, the scheduled departure time, the runway, etc. Uh, departure and the arrival runway. You can see it already predefined. Uh, you can make some changes if you want. Then we've got the uh, flight plan. And what you will see in most cases is that uh, Simbrief will add, let's say, the STR route manually, or automatically, I should say. You don't need to add it manually. Great option, right? But if you want to change it, you can still do it. And that's something you can change in the uh, open route finder. You can go to the find SID STR, and there you will see all those STRs which you can use because in this scenario we are arriving our via mobile so it makes sense that we simply select one of them uh, the eventual route for these uh, STRs are exactly the same right so don't worry about that uh, you can simply select them it will not change anything on this map and then you can simply import it into flight simulator all nice right everything will be done automatically except the approach because the approach isn't part of the flight plan and that's something you need to do manually inside the aircraft so what we will do now is i will pause the recording go to the aircraft and we'll show you how you can add it to the aircraft itself see you back in a few seconds as you can see i already imported the flight plan and that's due to the i would say nice uh say option to import the flight plans directly in the airplane right it has for example the salty 747 but also the uh, fly by wire a320 do have that functionality in this case you will see that both the sids but also if we would i would say scroll down uh, the str is not defined because in this case it ends at mobile and that's where you need to tweak it so there are two ways to tweak it right so depending on what's in being instructed by the ATC, uh, you need to select the correct option. So let's assume that we're correct or close to uh, show to go. Then we can press the show to go airport uh, option and then we can define either the approach or the star. In all scenarios, you first need to select the approach which you want to fly. So in this case, let's assume that we're again instructed to fly uh, ILS-09 Lima. That's the approach which we need to fly. But then you've got two options. Either you can select the VIA 
or you can select the star. And this really depends on what's being instructed by the ATC, right? If we go to the, uh, let's say, uh, stars list, you will see a long list with all kinds of beacons, including the Mopi ones. So can we use the Mopi approach? Yes, we can still do, right? Because if we, for example, select a Mopi, uh, no, Mopi asset, so need to <laughs> pay attention, uh, Mopi uh, 9 hotel, we can insert it and you can see that it has both the ILS but also the uh, star approach. This is one option you can do. So if I would insert it now, it would add all the waypoints which are in the standard terminal approach route for Mopi 9 Hotel. And then it will finally use ILS 09 Lima as the approach. However, in most circumstances, you will hear that the HC uh, you wants you to do something different, right? So if it doesn't assign you a star, which is, I would say, applicable in in the most scenarios, then you need to do something else. So in this case, we're going to cancel or change, and then we're going to say erase the change. We're going to go again to uh, show the go airport, arrival again, ILS 09 Lima. And then in this scenario, we're going to select the VIAS option. Because in most cases, what happens is that the ATC says, ATC says, hey, you need to use a runway uh, 09 left and fly via a specific waypoint. In this case, we're going to use a uh, LOR 6E because LOR 6E is the one which we need to use uh, in this airport, which stands for uh, the uh, Lorraine Airport or Lorraine Beacon, if I'm correct. Uh, you can also see that you've got the LOR 8B. Uh, so you need to keep an eye on your map, which one you want to use. In this case, I'm going to select LOR 6E and then select Insert. And if we would now go down the list, you will see, first of all, the destination has changed now directly to LFPG 09 Lima. But in addition to that, if we scroll down after Mobile, you see again a flight plan discontinuity. And then you will see Lorne, Booner and several other waypoints are being added including the distance but also the maximum i would say flight speed and uh, maximum flight level right so make sure that you're keeping it or sorry this is the uh, track and this is the uh, flight level so keep in mind that you need to follow those instructions atc in flight simulator 2020 will ignore these uh, limitations so make sure that say the closer you come to the airport that you're I would say following the guidelines for example, in this case with CF09 Lima, which is part of the approach. And how do I know that? Well, there's another uh, flight, plan, flight plan discontinuity here, which tells me that we're going to go into a different phase of the flight. In this case, you can see that the flight level needs to be 040, right? So make sure that you're, say, at this flight level before you, I would say, approach because else you will be too high and you will have a missed approach and then you will need to fly the missed approach procedure, which we're going to discuss in, I would say, future video. And then eventually it will bring you to the uh, runway 09 Lima from uh, Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport. So this is the workaround to, I would say, or not the workaround, this is the official process to do it. Can you tweak it a bit? Well, with SimBrief, you can tweak it a bit, but in most cases, it really depends on the aircraft which you're gonna use if it will, I would say, correctly import those STR routes. In this case, with the Phoenix, you can see that there are some issues. It doesn't import it correctly. So then you need to manually tweak it. Is there another way? Yes, of course there is, because it wouldn't be Flight Simulator if it was Flight Simulator. So there is one other way. And that's to do this, right? So we're gonna go back in to the main menu while looking at the volocopter here so let's assume that we are gonna pre-program our flight again so what you can do with simbrief is you can use the simbrief downloader to export the flight right so that's what i did here so i'm gonna select it then we need to wait and then it has pre-programmed or flight. So if we would go into this direction you can see that if you import it in the uh world map it will have the correct arrival right isn't that great so you can still use the correct arrival uh from simbrief because for some reason the world map does import it correctly 
as well as the departure route, right? So these are the things which you can always do if you want to use the built-in world map. You will see that it will honor the uh, flight plan uh, created by SimBrief and will correctly select these items. And you can still change it, right? Because if you don't like it, you can still change it. You can still change it to the one which you prefer. Uh, normally it's set to automatic, but in this case it's set to uh, Mopi 9 uh, Lima as the approach route and you can or arrival route 3 and you can see the approach route is not selected but if you would select uh, 09 Lima you can still do it because then you can see that the approach is also different uh, in this case you can make I would say a huge deviation here but that at least will ensure that you're following the correct plan and will arrive at the correct airport so if you're using an aircraft which doesn't have sim brief integration Make sure that you load, export the flight plan from SimBrief and then load it into the world map. And that will eventually ensure that both the ATC knows which plan you're going to use. Uh, I acknowledge it's a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of, I would say, uh, manipulating the ATC because this is something you would normally set to, well, guess what? I just set it to direct and uh, automatic and then let the ATC instruct you which one you want to use or need to use actually here ends this video in this video we start looking at the differences between standard terminal approach routes also known as stars and we looked at approaches and the difference from them right so it's a combination of both either you use the approach with the i would say via approach which will instruct you to fly via a specific waypoint or you're instructed to fly via a standard terminal approach route which will eventually end up in an approach and then will you, in both ways you can land successfully on the airport well if you can land successfully on the airport that also depends a little bit on your own skills of course but let's assume that they are good then you can still land on the airport here ends this video i hope you liked it if you liked it then consider to use the like button if you got questions or comments then feel free to post them in the comment box below and if you want to stay up to date about new videos posting then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel Thanks for watching and see you next time.